What's going on ladies and gentlemen, no zoop for you here. And you're watching a video submitted by a follower. This was submitted by Captain Malevolent... Malevolent? Malevolent? <laughs> Captain Malevolent Fair. And this round is special because he has the North America damage record for the Queen Elizabeth. And you're going to see that unfold here within this round. And it's quite amazing, to be honest, because, you know, we're, we're dealing with a, what, a tier 6 ship right here? I mean, the fact that he was able to, and I mean, there's there's two citadels right there on that poor Nerny. I mean, that, that's a huge feat. Huge feat. I mean, he took out most of the team's hit points. I, I mean, awesome round. But first... We're going to dive deep into the mailbag. We've got some awesome questions provided by you all, and I'm going to answer a few of them. So we're going to start the mailbag back up again. If you have any questions, please feel free to email them to nozoopforyou at gmail.com, and I might just select one or yours. And we also have the uh, Munchen coming up this week as well. I'm going to announce the winner for that, get that out of the way. So without further ado, while Mr. Malevolent here is doing his job, we're going to start answering some of these questions. And again, these questions are about anything and everything. So first off, Warship Fever says, Hey Zoop, I was wondering what you want to have work for the upcoming USBBs? And what you think about the new Italian battleships recently announced. And one more thing. What is your opinion on the Commander Skill rework? And what are your hopes for it? So, a couple questions there, Mr. Fever. And I'll try and answer them as good as I can. Um, for the USBB split, what, what do I want to have work? That's actually a uh, good question right there. Um, I would like them to work, period. Uh, from what I've seen right now, I, I don't know. They're they're not my particular play style. I don't like slow, cantankerous battleships that take forever to get anywhere. I don't like slow reload as well. Uh, hard hitting, hard hitting though they might be. I I don't know. Um, I I would like to have them work more like a fast attack split with secondaries, but we know that's not happening. So. I guess at this point, I hope I can actually enjoy them. And I guess I'm going to go into it with an open mind. I'll play them, uh, be honest in my reviews and my views on them. So, just going to have to give them a try at this point. Not what I wanted, but it is what it is. As for the Italian battleships recently announced, I am very intrigued. And I, I want to say that this might be the most excited I've been about a battleship line in quite a while. I mean, you've got some really historic ships in that line. You've got some not-so-historic, more paper-type stuff uh, based on historic. But they, they all look sleek. They look sexy. These, these wonderful pasta boats. I, I'm excited. So, I, I definitely think that the Italian battleship line is something everyone should be excited about. Uh, or at least battleship main. So, yeah, good, good times. I mean, awesome stuff coming. And on that last thing you asked about the Commander skill rework, I'm going to say it's about time. I, I'm happy it's happening. And my hopes for it is, I, I hope, if anything, it will provide different ways to play a ship. Meaning, for example, if, if I've got a USS Montana, depending on my captain's skill loadout, I can play it in one or two different ways, if not more. Um, I, I think right now we're in this situation where the captain's skills are very much cookie cutter, depending on what ship class you're playing, or what nation, or anything else. There's certain things you know you're going to take, certain things that you know you're not going to take, and, it, and it's kind of old. So I, I'm hoping this new rework kind of shakes things up, and I think it will. I think it will. Next question we have is from Naus Dorado. He's in North America, and he says, I played World of Warships for about six months every day. I now play at Tier 8 exclusively, but I can't figure out how radar and hydro works. I understand the basic concepts that it's used to spot DDs, that it's used to spot torps, but there are absolutely no videos on YouTube on it. 
Um, I'm going to interject there and say that I have done a video. Uh, look for the Back to the Basics videos I did for World of Warships probably four years ago. Now, uh, at least four years, maybe three, I, I don't know. It was a while ago. I guess the people who figured out how it works think it's too simple to explain, but if you were to make a video on how Radar Hydro works, how it affects tactics, because when I see Twitch streamers talk tactics, they're always counting the number of Radar Hydro ships on the other team, and I still can't figure out what exactly Radar Hydro is being used for. Alright, so we're, we're delving into kind of beginner territory here, but I'm going to answer this real quick for Mr. Dorado. Uh, those of you who've been playing for a long time obviously know how it works. Uh, but for you, you newer players out there, uh, like Mr. Dorado, radar is used to instantly locate ships. It penetrates through terrain. It penetrates through smoke. It penetrates through storms. And once it's... Well, storms are kind of a tricky thing. I'm not going to go into that, though. That might take a little while longer. Once someone pops it, everyone on your team can see that ship that has been spotted. So long, it's, so long as it's within your radar. So if, if you're a, a cruiser, you might have 10 kilometer radar. Every ship has different distances that their radar is affected. If you're looking to stay away from a ship, if you're on the other team and you know they have radar, if you know a certain ship, like a Des Moines, has 10 kilometer radar, you know you'll want to stay 10 kilometers away from that because you will be instantly spotted. Hydro is a little different. Hydro is more for spotting torpedoes. Hydro allows you to spot them a lot further out and allows you to react. However, Hydro also does work like radar if you're close enough to the enemy. However, you have to be a lot closer than you do for radar. And when I say a lot closer, usually right around 4 kilometers or closer. But at that point, you have assured acquisition. And if you are the one that is having Hydro used against, you will be perma-spotted. So, that's how they work. Uh, in a nutshell, and I, I really hope that helps you, Mr. Dorado. Um, and, and, you know, I know there's a lot of you all out there that are new to this game, still trying to figure out how the game works. Some of you are playing Tier 8s right now, and, and yeah, it's it's not an intuit, intuitive game. But, I'll try and help you, and there are a lot of other people out there that will as well without, you know, taking a crap on you. So, hope that helps. Next, this one comes from a 12-year-old kid. No, quite literally, that's what it says. Dear Mr. Zoo, what crosshair do you use? Whenever I watch WoWs, all the YouTubers seem to use one specific crosshair. Thank you, a 12-year-old kid. So I, I think I use, I think it's Type 14 or something like that. I just like the plain Jane basic, you know, no frills, non-dynamic. I, I don't need dynamic because I've been playing long enough that, you know, I, I can guess where I need to shoot. I mean, I probably don't even need the tick marks on them at this point. I, I just know how far out I need to lead a ship just by feel. And for those of you starting out, you'll you'll get to that point as well. It'll take a while, but you'll get there. Uh, so I think it's Type 14. It, it's just that, I think it's white with green, and sometimes I use the yellow one, but it's just a single horizontal line. I keep it simple. I, I like a decluttered screen. And you're probably referring to that giant spiderweb one. Uh, I, I think that's very, very popular among a lot of players. Um, or you might be referring to the no, <laughs> the no crosshair. Um, because when you use a replay that's an actual physical replay, the crosshairs don't even show up. So it's an odd quirk in warships. So you might see a lot of YouTubers with no crosshair, and that's the reason why. But um, I, I do want to say the majority of them do use the uh, spider web. I, I can't remember what it's called. So hope that helps you, 12-year-old kid. Now go eat your Wheaties. Uh, <laughs> the next one comes from Bobcat. When is your captain from the ring going to make it into the game? And that's an excellent question. Um, some of you might remember that the ring was opened up to everyone after its revision. Um, Jingles got his captain, and as the first place, he got to fly out and have the voiceover done. Uh, they changed it so that everyone who participated would get an in-game captain. And um, we had to submit, you know, a professional photo, and I, I think only a couple of us did. But uh, to, to make a <laughs> long answer short, uh, at some point, I don't know when, I've been told it's with the art department and they'll get to it when they get to it. They've got a lot of other more important stuff going on right now, so I don't know. It'd be cool to be at some point in the near future. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see, so that is the answer to that. 
Bobcat. And then the next one is kind of lengthy, and I, I, I might paraphrase it, um, but this comes from Steven. He, he gave his first name, and this is regarding the Issei and the Tone. And I'll, I'll just read you exactly what he said, because, you know, that it, it's nothing I can really answer, but something he feels should be in the game. And, I, you know, I, I kind of agree with him in ways. I, I kind of like what he said, so I'm going to share it with you all. And so, Steven says, I was thinking since Issei actually tried to have bombers, it could just kind of keep the same concept going. However, for Tone, I don't like that they're trying to give it CV mechanics. Seems lazy, and the damage output would be weak compared to just using guns. I wanted to push for Tone to have a more supportive role, as that's what it was intentionally used for historically, and would bring something new to the game. To expand on this more, really the only way we could get an IJN split would be to follow this, as all their light cruisers are low tiers already. I'm suggesting they could have Oyoto at tier 7 and give it actual light cruiser ballistics unlike Yahagi, move Mogami over and convert her as the tier 8 and introduce one of her sisters in her place, convert either Ibuki or Zhao for tier 9, and put Tone as tier 10. This would be about as close to a separate line you could get from what I know. As for the main topic, here's an idea for support mechanics. I'm suggesting you could give these ships a spotter ability that sends out a spotter to a single waypoint, much like how RTS aircraft worked. As the planes fly to their location, they fly to a higher altitude and aren't affected by AA, so they don't get blapped instantly. But as they arrive to the point, they descend to AA range. The idea is, as they fly out, they can spot ships out of smoke to see behind islands, key locations, or enemy lines. A strategy could be to have them fly across the map and spot as they fly out, or have them fly to a key location, but makes them vulnerable to do so. Or you could keep the same mechanics, but instead of spotting, they could emit a large AOE heal that could slowly regenerate, regenerate ally hit points for, say, 30 seconds. And then he goes on to say, sorry for the long message, but I think this would be a much more interesting and accurate way to implement them, and I'd rather see an actual support class mechanics be introduced in the game. And I agree with him. Um, it would be nice to see more support type stuff, but the problem is, and you know, I really like your idea about the uh, spotting aircraft, but we're talking about coding here and changing actual game mechanics and... You know, even something that simplistic um, as that spotter craft idea, it would take a long time to be implemented. And I, I think by long time, I mean at least a year to get through testing and coding and everything else. So while I like the idea and I would like to see something like that, I just don't think it's going to happen. And I think a lot of people would be upset if you moved Zal to Tier 9 as well. But I am glad you brought this up and, you know... Hey, maybe other people like your idea. Maybe Wargaming will. Maybe they're watching and they'll see it. So, um, I did want to get this out though, Steven, because this was a well thought out idea. Very well thought out. So, thank you. And that is actually going to do it for our mailbox today. I, I do appreciate it. And again, make sure to send them to me. We're going to get back to the task at hand, which is Captain Malevolent here, who is taking on Texas. He's already got 179,000 damage. Make that 180,000. I mean, good God. He, he's in a tier 6 ship. He's in a Queen Elizabeth, which I widely don't like. I, I'm not a fan of the British battleship line. In fact, I hate it. I mean, Conqueror... I, I don't even play the Conqueror, because I, I don't like the Conqueror, even. And he survives that broadside and takes out the Texas right there. Look at that. 200,000 damage now. And I, I wonder what the old North America record was. I mean, I'm not exactly sure. But still a very close game. And, you know, you've been watching this while I've been talking. I mean, it's it's been pretty close the entire way. You know, if he wasn't on this team, they'd be lost. I, I don't know what they'd do. And that helps there, losing that uh, Congo on the enemy team, taking that out. But he's not done yet. He's not done getting points. Yes, he's going into the enemy cap. Kind of has to, because the enemy's in his cap. <laughs> and you can see right now, he's telling the CV to reset the DD. Yes, you need to get over there. And he's sending out torpedo bombers. Not really what you want to be sending out to try and reset a destroyer. And that's pretty much uh, 
<laughs> Hope for the best. Mr. Malevolent is trying to get close enough so he can take some shots, but he's going to aim for this Congo right here, which is perfectly broadside, nice and smooth. We're going to see how much damage he does here. I mean, he's been on a tear, so I'm sure he'll get a Citadel, right? No, he'll get an overpen. He'll do a thousand damage. And yes, that's low tier mecha mecha game mechanics. Actually, you know what? That's that's uh, high tier game mechanics as well. Uh, almost seems like he's uh, having the round I had in my uh, Yammy earlier with that type of RNG. He's going to take some more shots on the Congo, though. There we go. That's a little better. There's some 10,000 damage right there. He's up to 212,000. He's already got the high caliber. He's already got the Confederate. I mean, th this guy's unstoppable. Yeah, yeah. I can see why this is the North America damage record. I, uh, sometimes the stars just align for you, as they did for him. I mean, this this is just phenomenal right here. I, I wish I could get that lucky. Can't quite take out the Congo right there. Does another seven or eight thousand damage. It's got the attention of the rest of the people on his team, though. They're going to start shooting at it. He's going to try and finish it off right here, though. And, you know, he could have already had a crack. And there's several instances in this round where he almost had it, but just didn't have the kill. These shots look good, though. And boom. You know what? There's the Kraken. Kill number five. 226,000 damage. Still two ships left. Still a close round. Enemy is still in their cap, so he's going to start resetting. And that's what he's got to do. Fortunately, he is now in their cap. Doesn't look like anyone's interested in him. That'll reset it. Takes the New Mexico almost down to half hit points. He's now at 239,000 damage. 235, excuse me. Marching towards 239. I think that was his total. And I, he's looking good right now. He's looking good. New Mexico is finally aiming for him. He's going to get behind this terrain right here. There's a nice hit. Now he's up to 239,266. Very close to winning. Another minute, and it's over. And all he has to do is hide right now. They've got no aircraft. He just needs to hide, and that's it. And that's exactly what he's going to do. And he's going to end with 239,266 damage. With the North America record for the Queen Elizabeth. So congratulations right there, Mr. Captain Benevolent Fair. Wonderful round. And again, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to send those questions to me, nozoop for you at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Zoop. Out.